Was it worth it? Uh, you know, this, this is the, the question that we're tearing ourselves apart about. And, uh, you know, I've been listening to everybody talking about it, and, uh, you know, it's certainly been interesting to hear it. Uh, I think, you know, the, the view from the vast majority of the country is, no, it wasn't worth it. 4,500 Americans dead, uh, somewhere between $800 billion and, uh, you know, over a trillion dollars spent on it. Uh, and, uh, you know, Iraq, the Iraq that we've got today is, uh, well, it's better than uh, when it was under Saddam, but it's struggling, and it's not clear it's going to be able to stay out of civil war. On the other hand, you know, you listen to some of the uh, the war's uh, most ardent supporters, in particular the Bush folks, talk about it. And, you know, they also do make some important points that we should keep in mind, which is, had we not gone in there, Saddam would probably still be in power. The Arab Spring almost certainly would not have swept him away. By this point, he might have a nuclear weapon. You know, we found out his, uh, he hadn't restarted his WMD programs. But uh, what's been so interesting about the aftermath of the war is all the information that has come out that paints a much more complicated picture. Uh, yeah, he didn't have WMD. We now know that. That is very clear. On the other hand, we did learn that this was an extremely dangerous character who did want to rebuild his WMD programs, and, and that containment really was on its last leg. So I think it's a very, very difficult legacy. And, you know, as a historian, I know that every 10 or 20 years, history changes its perspective on things. Fifty years from now, we may think very differently about this war from the way that we do now. I think the more important thing is to really think about what the lessons are. What are the lessons? Well, I, and I think there's some pretty obvious ones. Uh, first of all, be very careful about the intelligence. Even when the intelligence seems absolutely certain, and let's remember, while the, the Bushies played fast and loose with a lot of the stuff related to al-Qaeda and its ties to Iraq, you know, everybody believed that Saddam had reconstituted his weapons of mass destruction program. Well, that turned out to be absolutely false. Um, another one, I think, you know, a very important lesson for us to learn, especially as we think about whether we want to go into Syria and what to do about Iran, is that whatever the, the reasons for getting into a war, oftentimes the most important things of all are not about why you get in, but how you get out. And, you know, that was the part that, that you know, really got messed up in Iraq. Uh, some other more colorful terms come to mind, but I know that this is radio and I need to be careful with my language. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, boy, did things ever get bad in terms of that. And, you know, I think that we need to recognize that we as a nation, we have this bad habit. We talk about threats and we talk about, you know, can we bear this or that? And we don't have the kind of conversation that we need to about what is the war going to take? What do we require to commit to it? Is that a commitment? that we want to make. Uh, and if so, we've got to make the full commitment. I mean, I think that's a, a third lesson, a related lesson, which is you shouldn't try to win wars on the cheap. Uh, you know, I always like to say nobody gives you points for style when it comes to winning a war. Uh, you do whatever you need to. You bring whatever you need to bring. It is you know, a huge mistake to try to kind of go in lightly, to try to do it with only so much force as you need. Wars are incredibly unpredictable, and you've got to go in with a maximum of force to make sure that you can deal with any contingency. So I think those are three big obvious lessons. There are obviously a lot more than that. Though. Ken, Ken Bollock is with us, a Middle East expert, particularly on Iraq. Ten years later, was it worth it? You know, Ken... Uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this lately, and uh, my own self-analysis was that I was uh, I was wrong in two out of three areas. Uh, one was about WMD. I give myself a pass on that because everybody thought he had WMD, all the intelligence agencies, and I was in no position to know or suspect otherwise. But where I really missed the boat, and I think where I think where the where the leaders of this country missed the boat, was a presumption that after Saddam fell, that somehow. Uh, Iraq would would uh, relatively harmoniously unite in some form of democracy that we did not take fully into account the factious nature of of that country would you agree with that yeah well look first Javier, I think you know it's always good to be self reflective and, and believe me I've done the same thing and gone over at great length the mistakes that I made uh, in the run up to the war um, but you know that's one where I think that uh, the the Bush administration was just being wildly arrogant um, and and ultimately ignorant of Iraq and I think you ought to be a little bit easier on yourself uh, because you know my sense is that most of the folks in the country were listening to the administration and uh, you know we're, one of the areas where I fault myself 
and this may be playing into what you were thinking as well, was, you know, I looked at this group, the, you know, that cast of characters, that was the same group of people pretty much who had run the Persian Gulf War of 1990-91 and had done an absolutely brilliant job with that war and had been so smart and sensible and conservative with a small c. I mean, I'll never forget, uh, you know, General Scowcroft and uh, uh, Dick Cheney, then the, the Secretary of Defense, telling General Schwarzkopf, look, I don't care if you want another Corps of Soldiers or not, you're going to get them, because we're not going to lose this war. And so I think that there was a sense, certainly on my part, but on many part, that, you know, look, we've seen these guys run a major war, they're smart, they're sober, they're sensible, they're not going to be reckless. Well, that's exactly how they went into Iraq, and I think they actually did ignore a lot of very good information uh, that indicated that Iraq wasn't going to be easy. I mean, this is one where I think I did a, a pretty good job, and I go back to the final chapter of the book I wrote, which lays out in great detail, look, the, the reconstruction is going to be the hardest part. It's going to be the most important part. I said, if we don't do that right, we will create as many problems as we solved. Uh, you know, I said, I warned that if we don't do it right, Iraq would descend into chaos, warlordism, and civil war. So I think that there were a number of people, not just myself, people in the intelligence community as well, who were warning that the reconstruction of Iraq was not impossible, but it was going to be very long, very difficult, and very important.